graphics card prices have gotten absolutely insane. The most recommended GPU today from Nvidia is the RTX 4070, which is, oh my, it's $550? Is that considered mid-range today? That's just insane. So why have GPU prices gotten so high? Well, let's discuss it in this video. Ah, graphics cards. We all use them, whether you're gaming, 3D modeling, doing design work, or even yes, if you're one of those crypto dudes still mining coins like diamonds in Minecraft. Before we go looking into some of the reasons why GPU prices have absolutely skyrocketed recently, let's look back at the good old days because, well, I don't want this video to be all sad, you know? I just don't. And I think no year was better for GPUs than the 2016 because that's when Nvidia released the Pascal generations of their cards. And wow, this GPU generation was absolutely goaded. I mean, if you only had like 200 bucks to spend, well, no worries. You could grab like a mid-range card, like a GTX 1060, which, you know, besides the three gig versus six gig mess was an overall really good card. Or how about the 1070? It was no slouch either, coming in at just 380 US dollars and could run a lot of the games at the time at 1440p at good frame rates. The 1080 was also nice, but if you wanted the best of the best, the GTX 1080 Ti was king. Coming in at just 700 bucks, this thing is still doing fairly well in terms of modern games. Oh, by the way, guys, if you're wondering why I'm using a Mac right now and I don't have like a gaming, because a lot of people were like commenting on our Linux video, like, why do you have a Mac computer? Uh, it's just, it's just the laptop. We're using the video. I did, I did, I, you'd want me to bring my PC, gaming PC? I, I, I couldn't do that. So now if we put all of these cards into a table and then compare them to their equivalent models today, together with their MSRPs, Oh yeah, the situation is not very good. And you might, you might notice why people are not very happy the way things are going. But let's not stop there. Let's also add the VRAM section and show how much VRAM each card had. And I mean, that's even worse. Why, why is Nvidia not adding enough VRAM to their cards? What's going on? I mean, after a decade of progress and games requiring more VRAM than ever, uh, Nvidia is still choosing not to add enough VRAM to some of their models. And I mean, worse yet, you can buy a GPU, like if you had like a 1066 gig and you buy a modern GPU, there could be a chance that there's not gonna be a VRAM upgrade for you. I mean, that's just, that just, honest, that just blows my mind. It's something that AMD is at least doing right. Okay, so to find possible reasons as to why GPU prices are the way that they are, I'll be looking into the community and see what they think. And for that, I'll be using Reddit. I know, like some of you probably start cringing already, right? Personally, I think Reddit is a good source to look into if I need to just gauge on how the community feels on this. And this is perfect for this video, I think. And our first comment comes in here from a thread on r slash PC Master Race, and they say, I think GPU manufacturers saw how much people were willing to pay for GPUs during the shortage, and it heavily influenced their current pricing structure. 100%. The mining craze was absolutely brutal. The profitability every day for one machine is 30 USD. You see, I got all my miners in here. 5RX 580, 6800 XT MSI. 5700 XT. Looking back at how bad it was, I mean, people were literally paying so much sometimes for so little. Now, shout out to Tim from Hardware Unboxed. He does these GPU pricing updates and one we're looking at here is from November of 2021. And this is an absolutely unbelievable snapshot of those terrible times of GPU pricing. On the left here, you can see the original MSRP for the 30 series cards. And on the right, you'll find the average eBay sold listing price. So if we look at something like the RTX 3070, which was $500 MSRP, it was going for over $1,000 on eBay at the time, which is just, absolutely crazy, especially because it's a mid-tier GPU. So if you're Nvidia and you're seeing this unfolding before your eyes, yes, I do believe that they have, might have raised their prices because of that. In fact, I want to make a similar video in the future discussing like the smartphone industry as well, because phones have definitely gotten pretty pricey, so definitely get subscribed for that, but let's keep going through these comments now. They're not that expensive nowadays. You can get pretty good ones for decent prices. 
What? Someone's been listening to Jensen Huan way too much. This is like common sense. The more GPUs you buy, the more money you save. That's right. The more GPUs you buy, the more money you save. Let's get out of this thread. This is getting ugly. I'm still rocking a 1070 Ti for this very reason. For the games that I play, I still get pretty great specs even on 1440p. Ah, finally. I love this comment because, you know, sometimes people feel like they need the new fancy hardware and things like that. And I'm certainly guilty of this. Like I've bought things that I definitely never needed, but I still got them because, well, because I'm silly. Like if your current GPU is not giving you trouble, then why upgrade at all, right? Do you really need a 4090 to play old school RuneScape? You don't, you, you just don't. GPU pricing at the moment, honestly, not too bad. You are comparing the price before, but didn't consider inflation as well. Ah, yes, the inflation argument. So I want to investigate a little bit. So let's Google for uh, an inflation uh, calculator online. Yes, and then click here and access denied. No, it's probably because it's a US website, but that won't stop me because I have Surfshark VPN. So just by connecting to US, I can just do that and refresh the page and boom, my inflation calculator is here and ready. So guys, if you ever run into issues where you cannot access a website, then you need to get a VPN. And guess what? Since we are a Surfshark channel, by clicking the first link in the description, you'll get a really good deal for Surfshark VPN. Plus, you'll get two additional months for absolutely free. So it's a good way to support the channel and let's get back to the video. Okay, so for my investigation, I want to compare the GTX 1070 MSRP and uh, that would be $380. And we're also going to enter July, or was it June? I think I, th I think the GTX 1070 came, in, came out in June of 2016. And let's just click calculate. And as you can see, that is the same buying power as $483 today. Now, if we go back to that comparison table from earlier, wasn't the RTX 4070 $600 MSRP at launch? Yeah, it was. Okay, so th that's kind of awkward. That's around, uh, I can't do my math, guys. $120 difference here and there. But there's one thing that we need to acknowledge right away. The fact that the manufacturing cost of GPUs has gone up since these cards came out. So the real question I think we need to ask is, has manufacturing costs gone up by that much to justify this pricing difference? And listen, I won't pretend like I know how much that figure might be or what that fig figure is, but you can comment down below and let me know what you think of it. But let's get back to these comments. Get a use 3080 on Facebook Marketplace for 300 to 400 and call it a day. True, you could do that. And personally, I have bought a graphics card, like a used graphics card before and had nothing go wrong with it. Contrary to perhaps a popular belief, modern day graphics cards, you know, since like 2010, are pretty resilient and rarely break down. Sure, you might see like a post here and there on, on Reddit or somewhere that somebody's GPU died after like a few years, but generally that's pretty rare. And let's be honest, used deals can be pretty good at times. Though if we're talking about your average consumer or customer, not everyone will go out seeking used deals. They don't have a warranty usually, and some people just don't feel comfortable with used stuff, which I totally understand. At the end of the day, $1,500 or so for the best card is not a lot compared to other hobbies. If you can't pay up, then just do what you can afford. Okay. Oh, uh, how do I even respond? Listen, I'd be very happy if people who can only spend like $200 could get a GPU that's actually decent today and not worse than what they could have gotten like a few years ago. The reality is, is that if you're building a low spec PC right now, the best option in terms of value is probably the Intel Arc series. However, those cards have tons of driver issues that will probably take years to fix. I think that one of the reasons why people are so outraged about the current GPU market is the lower end market, which has become stale since 2016. 
They're so expensive because Nvidia has been cranking up prices this generation. If you want something affordable, go AMD. See, I'd agree with that point up until where AMD cards are also becoming more expensive and you're also losing out on a lot of the RTX and DLSS features. So sometimes you have to weigh in those things when considering your GPU, but generally, yes, AMD is a better value option as, and as of making this video actually, AMD's FSR has been getting more support for games and it's improving its image quality. But yeah, let's move on. Because people are paying that much for them, if people weren't paying those prices, the companies would have to lower them. You see, that's true, but I don't think we should be blaming the consumers here. Like if you need a GPU today, you'll get the best deal available for you. Or if you're a parent and little Jimmy wants to play Minecraft or Fortnite with his friends, once again, you'll get the best, you know, you'll just get the best what's available right now. And uh, okay. Listen, I'll give you one more just to further break this down. And this is probably gonna be a stupid comparison. So just don't even listen to it, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Like if egg prices all of a sudden skyrocketed, right? It's not like people will just stop buying eggs, right? Folks still need to get their omelets and pancakes. Uh, yeah, yeah just, that's a terrible comparison to be honest, but I'm gonna make it anyway, okay? Um, I just compared entertainment and food. Uh, but but that's okay. One thing is that Nvidia has started marketing what used to be prosumer card as a gaming card, i.e. what used to be Titan card is now the 90 tier card. Suddenly the most expensive card is not the $600 tier, but the $1,500 to $1,600 tier. It's true, and I'll actually add an additional point to that, that Titan class or flagship class, whatever you wanna call it, cards have now drastically changed from what they used to be a few generations ago. Like who remembers how the original GTX Titan was identical to the GTX 780 Ti, or how the Titan X was similar to the 980 Ti, or the Titan XP was close to the 1080 Ti. So basically what I'm trying to say is that there was no high incentive to buy those cards since you can just get the same performance by going a step down. Nvidia, of course, in their infinite wisdom, realized this and now we have cards like the RTX 4090, which yeah, they cost like an arm and a leg, but they do actually provide more performance compared to other tiers. I guess that's a good thing in a way, but it also means that Nvidia can charge you more for that premium product and people feel like they're missing out if they don't get it. Many people are missing the real cause. We are currently in the middle of an AI tech boom. GPUs are more valuable than ever, especially outside the realm of gaming. It's why even AMD GPU prices have gotten pretty crazy. This is so right. Nvidia has seen a big jump in sales and that's because of AI. And as much as I'm skeptical personally of AI, you know, I don't necessarily like it, it's here to stay. So if Nvidia can make most of their profits from AI industry, they can kind of shove regular customers like you and me uh, aside and just offer ridiculous prices. The thing about AI GPU sales is that the folks buying those cards aren't gamers, but instead they're big companies like freaking Amazon or Microsoft and so on who have more money than I could count though it wouldn't probably stop Mr. Beast from trying. Obviously, this is not great for us, but it's the situation we are in right now, and I guess we'll just have to deal with it. Okay, so in conclusion, are GPU prices that crazy? I would say yes, and also no. It really depends on how you look at it. Compared to what GPUs used to cost, you know, back in the day, 100%, I agree. But if we take into consideration things like inflation and manufacturing costs, you know, maybe they're not as crazy as everyone thinks they are. Especially if you're getting mid-range cars like the RTX 4070 or the Radeon RX 7800. You know, I'm more upset about the fact that the VRAM situation, especially on Nvidia side, is just beyond terrible. But I'm more sad the fact that the lower end cards are not as good as they used to be. Like the RTX 4060 Ti is just not good. It's terrible. Same goes for the RTX 3050, which is also terrible. I'd be 10 times, I'm not kidding, 10 times more happy, right? if the lower end GPU market was actually good and there were actually some good value GPUs in there. And I know I didn't talk much about AMD in this video and I feel like that's a whole nother topic as to why AMD cards aren't as popular. But if you can't wait for us to cover that topic, then go watch this video next where we discuss Linux and why it's not more popular in the desktop space. Because I think some of the reasons there in that video where we talk about Linux, kind of apply to AMD GPUs in a weird way. But that'll be all for me. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.